of a three gram jig head because there's a bit of a crosswind. Over breaking at the moment. <clears throat> Something a reasonable size just followed it up. I think it might have been a squid. Just gotta get the timing back. There, we're straight out. Hanging in the air a bit because of the uh, wind in my face. It's fishable though. So I've got the Dark Wolf KF. S, sorry, the KF 50 SL on. I've got five pound fluorocarbon, Berkeley 100%. I've got the Mavlos Plume C602 Ultralight. Uh, it does 0.6 to 8 grams. So I want to talk about this uh, rod a bit. It's an agin rod, so it is for this kind of thing, and it will throw lures less than one gram. Traditionally, agin rods are spinning reels, and they use the new, uh, I call them plastic lines, PE lines of some sort, uh, not braid, not, not mono, uh, because they don't interfere with the drop of the lure. Uh, braid floats a bit, so it might slow it up, fluorocarbon sinks, but you have to use what you've got anyway, don't you? <coughs> So I've got some five pound fluorocarbon on here today. They use light lines over in Japan. Oh, someone had a go then. Um, but there's a few bait fish down there. But what do I think of the rod? Well, it's a beautiful fine tip on it. It's a lovely feel in the hand. Um, everything that's good about it, uh, action wise, but the thing that the things that let it down are the real seat is very cheap and looks like it may well break to me. Um, love this taper, it's got plenty of power in there. Let's have a look at the action. So hopefully this is gonna film. You know, it's fairly fairly tippy. I'd say moderate fast action on that rod. Uh, it starts, it stops bending pretty much at here. Uh, it's quite fast into there and then it tapers into its to the base here and to the butt <clears throat> um, it has one major problem you might be able to see that you might not is it cuts the corner with the line there's not enough eyes on it really you know with, with small fish like mackerel horse mackerel small pollock other fish like that that's not going to be a problem if I hook something decent on it it cutting the corner might be a problem and may cause things to snap or grate on the blank or around the eyes. Um, I know uh, a chap down in Australia called uh, Kelvin Koo has one and he's caught large carp on it but he's finding the same thing as me. It's the spacing and the amount of eyes. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eyes on it. It's not enough on a six foot rod really. Um, you can get away with it most of the time. So for 50 something pounds, I guess you're paying 
for the blank because the eyes are okay I don't know whether they're Fuji or not I will check out check it out for you I guess they're not uh, it's the fittings and the amount of them it really does need two more eyes I would say but you've got to be careful with these rolls because if you put too many eyes on the tip you'll spoil the action of the tip uh, you'll make it too floppy so it's a compromise but I personally would have had a few more further down the blank if not right up at the tip still pulling to the left a little even bring the brakes down let's go let's go a dip, bit deeper this time so I'm, what am I trying to catch so I'm trying to catch pollock mackerel brass if I was really lucky a bass Well, the tide's completely wrong, they are making for a change. But uh, I might drop down lower, get a better cast on it, because I'm picking up the wind even more out here. Um, I'm going to try some small jigs on it, and we'll see if we can't pick something reasonable up. There'll be the old bass out here. But for, yeah, for £50, you can't complain too much. It is a good rod, it's, a, it's, it's more than just a fun rod. Um, you know, it has a really good 40 ton blank here. It's just, you almost want to whip some more eyes on yourself, but you'd have to take them all off and respace them, so it's not really worth it on a 50 pound rod. Oh, had someone hit it on the drop there, then. I'm gonna let it try and drift in the tide a bit. Not an awful lot of it here, there's a bit at the moment. Yeah, there's a little pollock, lots of them following it. I was hoping there might be some slightly larger pollock. But it loads nice, it lets you cast light lures. Um, as I shown on one of my little short videos, it was the first rod that allowed me to cast one gram. Because you really need um, a tip diameter of less than one. Um, millimeter to cast them so one millimeter here yeah. this is 0.75 of a millimeter a nice smooth cast throws it out there let's let it go a lot further down and risk losing it if the weather is ever oh god sorry pulled it then oh and again come on it's probably golfers grabbing it something's having it So just letting it work in the tide, it got struck twice there, then. Oh, definitely, you probably saw the rod tips go round. A couple of bites there, and I was hoping there's some mackerel around. That's what I'm... There are horse mackerel here as well, very similar, if not the same to what they have in Japan. I don't suppose they are the same, but... Um, we get a lot of mackerel, we have other years, the year I decide to do it, they're not really, uh, really about. There we go. I'm only doing a nice side cast here, I stayed up a bit higher because I haven't got so much, I've got more space. This railing will be in my way if I drop lower. Tide will be coming in anyway, so. Just let it free fall. The odd little jerk and it is moving left to right with the tide. It's quite a natural presentation. When it gets in a bit lower, I am. Um, drop towards me. Some a reasonable size out of girl, isn't it? Let's cast to the left. I'll deliver it that time. And let it hopefully move in the tide and drop into little pockets where fish might be holding. I've done videos here before where I've had a lot of fish on slow jigs. And I've got myself some smaller jig heads now. I have them down to one gram and less. But if you get a breath of fresh air, wind in your face here, you can't really cast them well enough. I'm just working more from the left round to the right now, hopefully. Let it go right down to the bottom or risk it or a biscuit. Good depth for you. Yeah. A little bit of drag in case I look something decent because you can pick a lot of variety of fish here. Cold fish, pollock. Yeah, got little pollock. 
little pout actually, I think. Let's have a look. String it up, let you have a little look. There we go. My first edging caught fish, and I think it's. I'm not very good at the difference between pout and poor cod, to be honest. I would say that's a pout. Uh, we're off the mark. Oh, there, I've just got a clip. I've got a three gram mustard jig head. I'm not sure you can see the uh, style of it. A little, it's like a little old knight's helmet. Fashion the helmet. A um, little lip here. We're going to with a little lip, which I guess helps with the control and the descent. And then I've, uh, it's got a little uh, gold hook on it. I've got a little supercontinent sort of, um, I don't know what they're called, I will try and find out for you. In a uh, sort of uh, pale brown colour with uh, black and green flecks on it. And that's just had that fish. So I, I do like the rod, I just wish if they put two more eyes on it and charged another tenner, I would absolutely love it. And it's not a noodle, look. It settles back fairly quickly there. You know, you've got to bear in mind, it's a very fine tip. Yeah, you just literally got to flick your wrist, wait for it to load and then pull through with it. You don't have to punch it too much because it loads so nicely. It uh, does most of it for you. Well, it feels very comfortable in the hand, the rod. <clears throat> Single-handed bait casting rod. I've just looped to loop that on my clip there because I don't want to dismantle I have to tie on the clip again being lazy and I'm just going to go with a split shot rig now then drop my split shot and just gently bite a couple on and we'll try some ISO try and pick up something down out of feet we'll take the net and go down down on the steps now oh, down rear below where we were fishing and I just want to set the brakes up a bit looser. A little bit of ISO on. There. ISO and rise. Just got one of these uh, supermarket sealable small tubs. I do want the versus tubs, but these do seem to be working. One's working and one's already uh, not. And I'm just going to put a bit of natural colour on because that seemed to work for me the other day only a small bit we'll try different colours put that there and as I showed you it's a size 14 hook and like god knows how old these hooks and that are there's someone I've dug out I used wasn't a match angler but I used to do quite a bit of pleasure fishing for roach and bream and the like and I bought a ton of these once. And as is always the case, I get bored of it and go into something else. But, uh, not as good as the hooks I was using the other day. I should have put one of them on maybe. I mean, they had longer shanks, the ones I was using the other day. Uh, but that will do it. Let's see if a small pollock for ass or something like that. We'll have a go. Uh, it'd be nice to get a, well, a pound or so size ballon rass or something to uh, really bend the rod a bit. Just letting it go down the deck and wait to see if someone has a go. I'm trying to drag up a little. Yeah, I need to just. Uh, the only problem I have is. The clip is preventing me from <laughs> having a short drop to gas with. So I'll have to flick it underarm, things like that. Uh, it's two swan shot, I would call them. I don't know how many grams they weigh. I'm no good with grams. Normally we manage to get something. I think I got, yeah, I got, got something. Look. 
straight off. Yeah, I think that's a Tom Pot. And he's a chubby devil. You've been eating a lot, mate, or you're ready to breed or something. Oh, what is? That's quite good, isn't it? They have two little furry things on top of their head. I think it's a Tom Pot. Yeah. Yeah, got something. A little rasp by the look of it. A little corky. A little white bit of ice to be honest. The tip is too soft for this kind of work. There it goes, the rasp back into the thing. You, you don't feel those little taps of bites. It's doing it, but you want something with a faster tip, to be honest, I think. Oh, back end. Oh, got something then. Oh, missed it. Messing around with a little bird's nest. Let's see, kind of control drop the start. Right, down there. Oh, yeah, got something, felt that bang. Oh, tiniest little fish. Tiny little pollock. Beautiful thing, that. I felt that alright. Just about get that out with a discorder, I bought one and a new one. This is a bit bigger. Bigger pollock maybe, or rice again I think. Yeah. Hitting some rice. We are feeling it. Let's have a look. This is, that's a little baron I think. That's what I'm calling that anyway. we will switch to the white lure and me get my act together. It's really starting to produce now. There's Ballon, Cork Queen, Pollock, Pout. Let's sit there and see what else turns up. Tom Pot. Yeah, this one's a bit bigger. Oh, yeah, it's a little rass again, I think. Smack that. There we go. Of course, with a fine tip, it allows it's a little cork queen. Get in their mouths a bit better. I'm literally casting out of there, letting it hit the deck. And then the old bounce, but pretty much wait until something hits it. With the white bait being very visible, we're able to see it quite easily. We're having a bit of a cork queen fest here at the minute, rouse fest. I'll jig it up in the water a bit, I might pick up something else in a minute. There's a lot of pollock down there. They're pretty much hooking themselves. This size 14 hook looks just lovely for it. 
creep it up the reed now, see if anything will follow it. No. Uh, flicking it off the tip because the tip loads so easily you can do that nicely so you could do that with a little crankbait or something if you wanted to use this for trout or something it would work but, um, it's not too long for it not ideal for cranks you'd have to really put some action in there for the little jerk baits something on no it's thank no. I'm just going to whip it no. probably going to lose this by the look of it and you can see that tip is putting up with that, the rod's putting up with it, isn't it? That's going out there. <coughs> Let's let that sink through the depths. I'm actually going to turn the brakes up a tad. Alright, I'm just going to twitch this. Let it flutter, twitch, flutter, twitch, flutter, twitch, twitch. Something shiny. I've done a lot of tiny pollock. To uh, yeah, get out there a bit more now. This is where I'd be expecting to get pollock, toadfish, mackerel, maybe a scad. If they're around, they should hit this. Oop, not into the weed. Got there the fish. Changed that to a single on the bottom there, with a bit of flasher boo on it, same as on the top. Rather than a treble. You'll try through the water column. You can stop it with bait casters nice and easily by just putting your thumb on and then jigging at certain depths, searching the water column a bit more. Come on, fish. Wind's picked up. <laughs> well, the rod's handling it. Um, this is probably your own five grams I'll see if it says out on the lure itself but I would imagine this lure is about five grams and there's there's no hint of it the tip folding up on me or anything like that like I say it is a nice rod let's just try a slow retrieve and a drop every so often A little vibe bait on there, and I would say this is pretty much at its limits. Uh, this is about eight gram or so, nine gram. Let's see what the tip does with that. Yeah, the one's loading it and casting it. Not a hint of a problem there, and it turned the brakes up a little. All right, 
Maybe a bit of vibration will attract something. Vibrating as it sinks. Oh, yeah. Oh, we had a pollock then. Did that change bait, fishing it down near the deck. That was a reasonable sized pollock for this. And he got off. They want a bit of bit more vibration. Oh, I'm just winding it and then then it ticked down itself in the tide and I can see the old tip vibrating. I'm just waiting for something to smack it. <laughs> the year I decided to take a badge in, I'll only bleeding fish around. I should be catching fish cast after cast here, though. <laughs> Typical. Right, I'll sum up with a rod, because I'm going to try something different with another rod now anyway. Um, yeah, it's a lovely rod. It's a beautiful blank. Um, the reel seat's quite cheap. It sits beautifully, though. It hasn't broken on me or anything. I've used it a few times now for various methods from light rock fishing to a bit of adging. Unfortunately, there's not many fish around really adging at the moment, so uh, it's a bit of a downer because that is what it was designed for. Um, the thing, the only thing that lets it down is it could do with another couple of eyes because it, the line cuts the corner when it's bent on a fish. That's not a problem with the small fish that I'm generally fishing for at all. You know, adging wise, it's not gonna make a difference. You're not gonna lose a fish because of it. But if you picked up a bonus big fish, it may be a problem then. But saying that, I know people that have caught decent sized carp and things like that on it. Um, chaps in Australia and other places. <coughs> so for 57, 60 pounds or so, I don't know how much they are on AliExpress now. Uh, you've got to pay your taxes and everything. So you're probably pushing 65, something like that. Um, it's a very capable world. You could, it's quite, adaptable you can use it for your edging a little bit of light rock fishing like i've been doing sort of slow jigging when you're edging or small uh, small jig soft plastics that kind of thing it will cast up to the limit that it states uh, which is good and i presume it will cast down to that limit with the right reel i have used it to cast a one gram trout magnet so that's pretty close to the 0.6 grams it states and it will go up to the eight grams that it states um Today I paired it up with the uh, Dark Wolf Ultra, as you can see there. The guides, I don't know if they're Fuji or not, I'll see what they state. They, they seem decent though, it's just I would prefer a couple more into space, and particularly on the lower, this sort of here, this section of the blank. I'd space them differently so that you could get a few more in there. It doesn't seem to matter so much in the tip, there seems to be quite a few up right up in the tip. It seems to be in this sort of section and maybe up to here where it cuts the corner. Um, the tip doesn't fold up um, with heavy lures. This one here is seven gram. It loads and it loads nicely. Um, it's sensitive as it's only a 0.75 millimeter tip, which is why you can cast such light lures. So yes, it'll do what it says. It will do this edging work for you. You need perfect conditions to throw jigs that light. Um, a lot of edging is done at night and it's just short casts and flipping it under lights and that kind of thing and yeah it'll certainly do that I've been doing that with the split shot rig you would have seen here um, so you're very capable world if you just wanted to buy one rod which would do you for a lot of things this and say you want to use it for a trout rod you could use this in a small stream for trout it will cast those light lures um, if you as the tip is very very floppy if you were using it for crankbaits you know what you could do all your normal size three grams five grams two grams possibly even one gram um crank rates you're gonna have to waggle it a lot to get some action into them you'd probably want to be using braid with it to compensate for that but then again that light tip is going to help you hook and not lose those trout that just jiggle everywhere don't they so yes i like it it's a very nice rod i will be keeping it i just wish it had a couple more eyes on it other than that fantastic rod but uh mavlos who, who if you make these um that is a thing i've heard about a lot of your rods i only own this one rod so i can't say about all of them but i would advise you to spend that extra 10 15 pounds whatever it is 
putting a couple more eyes on your rod and then your rods would be fantastic and maybe improve the quality of the real seat this is okay i mean it's doing it to be honest it is light stuff we're doing so it should stand the test of time um but yeah certainly the eyes cheers the constant angler